Assalamu alaikum. Hotep. Praise the Lord. Give yourselves a round of applause for coming out tonight in this beautiful city of Motown, Detroit. It's an honor to be here. My name is the Reverend Matsumela Mapfumo, also known as Mark Thompson, the host of Make It Plain. And it is a pleasure to be here with you at this historic moment. We are recognizing and celebrating this Juneteenth week. Amen? A whole week of celebration around our freedom that began, as many of you know, on Wednesday with that historic hearing on H.R. 40 in Congress. How many of you all watched that? Now, this was historic as we move forward in our struggle for reparations. And the most appropriate place for us to gather is Detroit. And when I say gather, of course, I'm speaking of the 30th annual convention of the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations in America, and COBRA. <laughs> Seated behind me on uh, my left and right is the board of Encobra. Just going to ask them to stand so we can give them a round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, the board of Encobra. Now, in the interest of time, I've been asked not to acknowledge any particular uh, individuals. But, and the person who told me that is one that didn't want to be acknowledged, but I must say, I do have to acknowledge her because we couldn't be in Detroit. I couldn't have permission to come to Detroit without her permission. Uh, we appreciate her, her activism, uh, her work on the council, her work with John Conyers, her work with the NAACP, her work on the air. Please acknowledge Mama Joanne Watson. I just want to do that. I want to also lift up two sisters who are right here on stage, Attorney Nikichi Taifa with her bad self, and Attorney Adwai Toro with her bad self. Attorney Adwai Toro was the first female co-chair of NCOBRA, which got started from the National Conference of Black Lawyers meeting many of the National Conference of Black Lawyers from Detroit people like Jeff Edison and Shokwe Lumumba were a part of that NCBL. But Attorney Adwai Toro and also Attorney Nikichi Taifa, who began working as the Minister of Justice for the Republic of New Africa when she was still in law school, appointed by Dr. Mario Bedelli. And look, look at them and the roles they played. Dr. Leonard Jeffries, who's on the front row here, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. <laughs> Dr. Rosalind Jeffries on the front row. There would be no talk about the African Holy Spirit and the understanding and the connection of our empowerment, connecting Pan-Africanism and nationalism, black folks all over the diaspora, if we did not have that teach. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. The minister is here. The minister is here. The minister is here. Assalamu alaikum. Hotep. Hello, Black Power. 
So uh, today is a special occasion for me personally because I'm introducing one of the greatest leaders in our history. I've introduced him a few times, but today I really want to introduce him for all the work that the Nation of Islam, since its inception through the Mohammed Speaks and their platform on what we want, to the final call placing the Nation of Islam clearly in the history of the reparations movement in America. So when Minister Farrakhan relocated to Chicago in the 1970s and began to venture to rebuild the Nation of Islam in Chicago, somehow the nationalist community in Chicago got connected to the minister. And through that connection over the years, we have worked with the minister on many projects, but specifically as it relates to the reparations movement in the early days, everybody thought I was a registered person in the nation of Islam. I guess I really am. So I've been working with the nation of Islam and the minister for many years. In the early days of Savior's Day in Chicago, and Minister, you remember this, the first public program of the Chicago chapter of the National Black United Front, April 4, 1981, on government spying and white national violence. You were the keynote speaker with the Honorable Harold Washington, the late Dr. Bobby Wright, and Haki Matabuti before 2,000 people at Quinn Chapel Church. You remember that, Brother Minister? Yes, sir. 19, 1984, we hooked up with you and went all around the country in the underground while you were promoting the campaign of Jesse Jackson running for President of the United States. You remember that, Brother Minister? Yes, sir. And then when you decided to put out the call for the Million Man March, somehow we ended up in the room at the National House with 200 organizers from all over the country, creating the National Million Man March Organizing Committee. It led to one of the greatest gatherings, marches, and demonstrations in the history of the United States. And if you go back and look at the program that day, the minister let me speak, and I called for the release of all black political prisoners. I called for reparations for African people, not only in this country, in the world, and that we should elevate the movement for African-centered education in this country. That's on the tape, thanks to the minister let me run my mouth. In 1996, when we discovered the crack cocaine phenomenon blistering the cities of the country, and we decided that is the National Black United Front, that we wanted to duplicate and replicate what Robeson, Patterson, and Du Bois did in 1951, and we launched this genocide campaign to charge the United States government with genocide once again, and in replicating what they did in the past, we had to have some money, but we didn't have any. So we had a fundraiser, for tickets, $25, and the minister let me meet with him, and I said, Minister, I need you to buy these tickets. He said, Brother Conrad, how much are the tickets? I said, Brother Minister, $25. He said, hey, brother, how much are the tickets? <laughs> I said, Brother Minister, $25, and I had my my friend, my movement comrade, Bob Brown, with me. And Bob kicked me under the table, and I woke up, and because we were taking a delegation to Geneva, Switzerland, to charge the United States government with genocide. And I said, Minister, are you talking about the plane tickets? He said, yes. He said, how much are they? I said, $2,500 a piece. He said, come back in the morning and get your check.
Chokwe Lumumba called me. They were trying to disbar Chokwe in Mississippi because he was going up against these white supremacist courts. And he called me, he said, hey, can you get the minister to come down here and speak? I need some money. These, these white people about to take my license. So I called the minister, and Chokwe called the minister, and we went to Jackson, Mississippi, and Minister Farrakhan turned out the state of Mississippi. <laughs> and they left Chokwe alone. <laughs> On the way to the UN World Conference Against Racism, where the December 12th movement under the leadership of Viola Plummer and the National Black United Front that mobilized more than 400 people to go to Durban, South Africa, behind the scenes and backing us up was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam as we went into the belly of the United Nations and got the United Nations to declare that the transatlantic slave trade, slavery, and colonialism were crimes against humanity. So y'all don't know that Minister Farrakhan may not be seen doing this, but he's behind the scenes and he's been with us at every step. <laughs> August 17, 2002, the Millions for Reparations rally. The white people said we didn't have very many people, but the own park system said we had more than 50,000 people from 67 cities and 34 states backed up by the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I know the minister would get tired of me calling in and saying, Minister, I got to meet with you on another one. So I called the minister and asked him would he convene all the reparations activists and organizers in the country. And on July 26th at the Salam restaurant was Imario Bedelli. Queen Dorothy Lewis Benton, and the list, I think Dr. Ray Winbush. It was a long list of organizers all in one room. Dr. Ron Walters couldn't be present and sent me a paper talking about how to create operational unity in the reparations movement in America and came up with a concept out of our brothers and sisters in South Africa called the Indaba. Y'all yeah. remember that? So Minister Farrakhan agreed with the Indaba movement, and we went to Jackson, Mississippi, and filled up the stadium. We went to Houston, Texas, and filled up the stadium. We went to Baltimore, Maryland, and filled up the stadium. We went to Atlanta, Georgia, and filled up the state. And thousands and thousands of black people in this country got awakened to the idea of reparations. Are y'all with me? It's a lot more, but on a personal note, well, I'll just say when Bill Hillary Beckles, when Dr. Ron Daniels brought Hillary Beckles to Chicago at Chicago State University to roll out CARICOM, the minister was right on the stage and gave right. greetings right. to Hillary Beckles. But on a personal note, when I retired from the university where I had been teaching for 40 years at the Jacob H. Carruthers Center for Inner City Studies, Somebody maneuvered a celebration in my behalf. And somebody said, come to the back. And I came to the back, and the minister was there, and he wanted to talk to me privately about my retirement from being a professor for 40 years. And the minister, we chatted a, a bit, and I had a couple of friends in the room, and the minister gave me an envelope with my retirement fund contribution. So, Minister, I ain't never told you thank you for that little contribution, but I'm thanking you not only for the contributions that you have made to me personally, but to the African people in the world. And so I'd like to greet with all of your might the great Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love you too, very much. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness to the oneness of God and to the oneness of his people. Though the Quran says he created us into many tribes and families that we may know one another. But all of us come from one source and that source is the creator himself. As the original people of our planet. There were no brown, red, yellow, or white people in the beginning. In the beginning, it was us. And from us came all the others. So the Bible says, from one blood came all nations. And that one blood is your blood and my blood and our blood. So in this late hour of confusion, death and destruction, the resurrection of the black man and woman of America and those all over our planet is a necessity. Because until we are resurrected, meaning brought back to our original state and place, the nations of the earth will not find order. The order comes from justice. And in the book of Revelations, there was an angel riding on a, a horse a black horse, and it was justice. Right. And until we rise, right. and until we are returned to our original state, the earth will be in convulsion. That's right. But when we are purified right. from our 400 year sojourn under an enemy, then we can purify everything else that came from us. Then it will be one world again and peace will reign because the black man is awake, is resurrected, is restored, is repaired, and is back on his post as the original man, the cream of the planet and the absolute God of the universe. I greet all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace. We say it in the Arabic language, Assalam alaikum. I want to thank my dear, dear brother, friend and companion in struggle, Dr. Conrad Worrell. The leadership of Encobra, Dr. Nkechi Taifa. Dr. Carr, Dr. Joanne Watson, and to all of the brothers and sisters of Encobra, I personally want to thank you for keeping the idea of reparations 
and reparatory justice front and center for 30 years. I want to thank you for enduring what our people put on us when they don't understand who they are, they don't understand what is rightfully theirs, and when you try to point it out to them, unfortunately, some of us become our worst enemies. And we break the spirit of those who want to try and lead us in a better way. But I thank God for in Cobra. I thank God for the movement of black nationalism and pan-Africanism. I thank God for all of us who struggle under different names. But every organization has value. And only tribalism will keep us from seeing the value of one another. So what Dr. Conrad Worrell said of the minister in secret and in the open, supporting everybody who struggles to give justice to the black man and woman of America. Why do you do that when their philosophy is not religious or they are not Muslims or they are not this or that? It does not matter. What does matter is that we are a suffering people and we cannot afford the luxury any longer of feeding the divisions, the tribal manifestations of slavery and neo-colonialism and colonialism. We have to see all of us who struggle as one nation. One people with one great objective, total liberation of every black man, woman, and child on our planet. One of the things that my teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, said to me was, think for the whole. Speak for the whole. Don't just think for those who are Muslims. Don't just think for those who are nationalists. Don't just think for those who are civil writers. Think for the whole. No matter who they are, no matter what they are, no matter where they are, think for them, stand for them, work for them, live for them. And when you can't live anymore, die in behalf of your people. To the members of the Nation of Islam, we wouldn't be here today if it were not for the nationalists that came to my side and our side when we started our rebuilding efforts. We wouldn't be here today if it were not for the African American Patrolman League and the black police that had nationally organized. And before there was an FOI, 
they guarded me in every city into which we went to bring back to bring back the nation of Islam we can't think just for muslims because there were christian pastors who stood with me and stood with us we have to be for all or be for nothing at all because we will always be behind until and unless we act and think for the whole of our people now having said that i just returned from the holy cities of mecca and medina in the arab and muslim world where we were very warmly received highly respected because the muslim world does not have a champion yes sir yes sir that's right practically everybody has been co-opted that's right yes sir yes sir but there's a free black man in america who is unbought has not and will not bow to the forces that control this world so i have been a consistent black man on this battlefield ever since i became conscious 64 years ago i don't know how many of you have been on the battlefront for over 60 years or s- nearly 70 years uh, but i have and i'm no way tired there's a verse in the quran that says allah is the only reality everything else is an illusion right right we come and we go like a ripple on a stream only a few are remembered beyond their times it's because each of us does have a time yes sir yes sir and that's the time when life is a part of your being yes sir you're alive this is your time this is our time the question is what do we do with our time yes sir because there's another generation depending on what we do with our time that we can pass them the baton of time so that the struggle will continue until victory is ours it is only vanity that makes us think that victory should come in the time of our lives it is knowledge that allows us to see that when you have a problem as deep and complex as the problems that we have it took years to put us in this condition it's going to take years to get us up out of it but each one of us has a work to perform during our lifetime and if we are true to the gift that god has given us if we are true to the principle of love yes sir 
If we are true to the principle of love, then we will adore the ancestors who laid the foundation that we stand on today. And when we speak in our time, we speak for the dead that are gone and for the unborn generations yet to come. So there must be no weakness in our speech, no cowardice in our wisdom and the explanation of our wisdom. In Cobra, Dr. Imari Obedeli, Queen Mother Audley Moore, all of those who have struggled for the ideas of uh, nationalism and Pan Africanism. I hope that God will give me words that will live longer than I, that will guide our steps going forward because the division among us is our worst enemy. Vanity among us, the ego killing ambitions and struggles of the ego to override what is in the best interest of us and we, because the ego always wants to express itself to the destruction of the group. Love is the only force that will put errant ego to rest. Love is the only force that will cause us to see how much of nothing I and we are as individuals. But how great we are when we can put our ego into submission to what is in the best interest of the whole. So I want to start from the back page of the final call. And I want to go over something in hopes that we can agree on, not religion. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. Right, right, right. But universal principles that apply to every human being that walks on this planet. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the early 60s came up with a program that he said was in accord with universal law and principles that is backed by the teachings of God and the prophets and the sages and wise people that have come up in every generation among every people. He put 
something out called what the Muslims want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He used the definite article, yes, sir. the. He was implying that old Islam yes, had served its purpose. Yes, sir. It was dominated by non-original people. They did the best they could because Islam is not a religion. Islam is the nature of God and the nature in which he created the human being. Every dog box, no matter what the species is, because barking is a natural response from dogs. Every creature makes a sound that identifies it. And with that sound, that creature communicates with its own. And some make sounds that communicate to other species, not necessarily their own. So when the lion roars... All species understand. It ain't my language. But that lion is talking to me. And I better understand what the lion is saying. Because in it is a warning. No wonder the Bible said there's a lion asleep in Judah. Who's going to wake him? So those of us that are in the lodge or in the Masonic order, the lion's paw is the only thing that could raise the master architect from death. We are the lions of civilization. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is memorialized in the desert of Egypt with the head of a black man on the body of a lion called Abu El Haul. The father of everything. But the face of the lion is the face of a black human being. Napoleon was so upset with that nose that only we Africans, you know, of a certain type. Have that kind of nose. That's telling you something about who we are. The rest of the black family is awaiting our rise. So when we went to Mecca, we didn't go there to bow to another man's way of civilization. Because before they were, we are. Islam is not a religion that came with Prophet Muhammad 1400 years ago. The latest expression of it came 1400 years ago. It didn't even have a name. 
prior to 1400 years ago because it was and it is the nature of God and the nature in which he created the human being. You didn't have what they call religion. You exercise the nature of your being. And the nature of your being is to be upright. Not to be a thief, a liar. You were under thieves and liars for over 400 years. And they made us into themselves. So when you look at black people, you're looking at a creature. Made in America. Made devils. Because that's what the enemy is. And he could not make you righteous because righteousness is not a part of his nature. And we have been under them so long they, they have made us into themselves. So we are thieves today. We are liars today. We are murderers today. We are fornicators and adulterers today. We are freaks today. We are lesbians. We are homosexuals. We are transgender. We are queer. Whatever the white man is, that's what we are. Because he could only make us what he is. So you can't, you can't say you want reparations and think it's money. What will a devil do with money? What will a white man's nigger do with money? And no love for himself or his own people. And if reparations does not repair our broken mind, our corrupted souls, and bring us anew again, we can say we're engaged in reparation masturbation. I'm not trying to be vulgar. But our expressions are vulgar. If it only is for a few. We all have to be made anew. Not half made. Made anew. Our lives have to be transformed. So the reparation has to start where the original creature started. Well, wait a minute. Uh, Fair can is... Do I have to accept your religion? Accept your own religion. But most of us don't know what that is. Accept the nature of yourself. 
which is righteousness. And once we start practicing the doing of what is right, loving for your brother and your sister what you love for yourself, doing unto others as you would have them do unto you, then we'll always be these niggas struggling with concepts that we can't figure out. I have to speak straight words. That's the luxury of being old. I know the young ones always ask the elders, do I have permission to speak? And we'll say, only if you got something to say. Because some of the elders need to shut up if they don't know what to say. Just leave me alone a minute. I, I didn't have nothing on my mind today. I just wanted God to have his way. Righteousness is our nature. Righteousness is the power of your being. You do not have power being wrong. You rob yourself of power when you think like a thief. We raise money and put it in the hand of somebody and they're trying to find a way to take it. No, not casting aspersions on anybody. But I lived long enough to know that everybody can't handle everybody's money. Damn. All our organizations will fail. is not at the root of it. Because any gift that we have, you didn't give it to yourself. Any gift that you discovered that you have, you ought to know that somebody that loved you more than you loved yourself gave you that gift. But no matter what gift you have, you have to know how to use it in accord with the nature of God and the nature of your being. Then your gift will bring fruit and multiply good. Those of us who have the gift of Oratory. Some of us think that if you can speak well, you can lead. Not if you do well, but if you speak well. So most of us are like showmen. Playing for applause, not to lift the level of consciousness of our audiences with our oratorical skill. God is the only reality. He's alive in every generation, yet he's so old we can't fathom his beginning. 
But there's not a generation that lives that doesn't talk about the originator yes, sir. of the heavens and the earth. That's right. Some of us have been at this thing a long time. And we're tired now. And time has passed us by. And time will pass us all by if you don't pass time with the God of time who gave you your assignment. Listen to what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everybody gets old except God. As I said last night, I'm, I'm in an embrace with 90 years of age. You know, we, we're at a distance, you know. We, I'm holding that pretty girl at a distance, you know. But she's uh, trying to tell me, come a little closer. <laughs> when you get to these ages, you got to think about mortality. What am I going to leave behind for another generation? Some of us are so envious of young people. That if we see that they have something to offer, instead of helping them up, we try to crush them. Those are sick elders that need to either change or die. Once you become envious of youth, because they have what we once had. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm not upset over young people. That's right. Not at all. They know it. <laughs> I'm happy to see a young vessel that may be a quarter full. that I can pour something into that vessel as I leave the planet knowing that time marches, God marches with time. And if you march with God and with time, you'll always be relevant no matter how old you are. I have a lot of young people around me. When I can look in organizations and see the bald and the gray and the toothless, and I don't see the young people in the organization then the organization will die when we die if you're not attractive to young people check yourself young people know that old people get old and if they don't know all they gotta do is keep breathing And as the saying goes, you'll understand it better by and by. <laughs> Young people will follow us if they know that we are for their success. And we are willing to share with them the knowledge of our life experience so that they won't make the mistakes that we have made starting from scratch. (laughs) 
church is dying. All right. Don't tell me you the UNIA and you don't have young people. Mr. Garvey is alive if we are alive with him. He didn't come with an old philosophy. He came with a living teaching. So take the next time you go to church or go to the mosque or go to your organizational meetings, look and see who you're talking to. Right. Ah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some toothless person. <laughs> whose breath is not too nice to smell. I'm, I'm sorry. I I'm trying to tell us that youth should be all around us. Youth should be all around us. That's the way the reparations movement will never die. Mr. Muhammad asked or said this is what we want I want to know if you want these things he said we want freedom a full and complete freedom and in Cobra don't you want that in the NAACP, don't you want that? Yes, the Shrine of the Black Madonna, don't you want that? Yes, Whatever church you belong to, don't you want a full and complete freedom? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, let's unpack it then. What is a full and complete freedom? If you look at nature... Freedom allows the creature to grow to its fullest, reproduce itself, yes, sir. and die. Right. Yes, sir. We have never been allowed to grow to the fullest manifestation of who we are. There's always a Caucasian reality and a wicked system that is at the head of your desire to rise. Talk to me. When you get to a certain point, they don't want you to go any further. The system operates on you, on me. Some of us are tired of bucking, bucking a wall, a ceiling, knocking at a door that doesn't seem to open for us until we get tired. And our children look at us. Mommy, you still there? Saying the same old thing, doing the same old thing, not making changes to satisfy the desire for growth and development. Mommy, what's wrong? Daddy, what's wrong? What's wrong is 
I lost the zeal to fight. So when the enemy put the ceiling up, I didn't develop what it takes to break the ceiling. I stayed in a system that broke me. So I died without fully realizing who I am and who God made me to be because I'm not yet free. So Nina, my Nina, Nina Simone, she said, I wish that I knew what it means to be free. Here's a woman that had great skill, great talent, a classical pianist that couldn't play in classical concert halls because she was too black, hair too nappy. So they told her, sing, nigga, and play the piano. But nobody sang like Nina. Lord, she could take a word and make that word live. Broken because the men in their lives didn't understand the value of that woman. Always fighting with her man. Because he was no damn man at all. So my, my Nina died. Did the best she could, but she died unfulfilled. So did Sarah Vaughan. So did Dinah Washington. So did all the black ones. So did Whitney Houston. We don't know how to handle women with greatness. We want to be big men, but we're frightened by intelligent women. We want to be free. We want a full and complete freedom. Is that what you want? Yes, well, why the hell are you limiting others from their freedom? Because that's your wife, that's your children, that's your co-worker, with your envy and your jealousy and your self-hatred. We want a full and complete freedom. Don't we? Can we all agree that that's what we really want? Why should you die unfulfilled? Why should you know you have this talent, this wonderful gift, and you die without developing it to its fullest and giving it back to God for his glory in feeding human beings with yes, your sir. gift. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. We want justice. Yes, sir. We want equal justice under the law. Yes, sir. In all our organizations, we have rules, we have laws. Yes, sir. Talk to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want equal justice, but do you give it? Do you give it to the people working under your leadership? Do you make people bow down to you? Or do you encourage yourself and them to bow down to the creator and free themselves? so that they can rise 
like cream to the top. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. That's the Muslim program. So if somebody comes and they say they ain't a Muslim, you're going to deny them? That's not what your teacher said. If they come with a color that you don't like, listen, listen, but they're willing to bow to your leadership. Yes, sir. You're going to deny them because of their color? See, among us, we got a color problem. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Either you're too late, light. Oh, you're too black. Look in the nation. You got Farrakhan. You got Ishmael. You got Nuri. People saying, damn. All these yellow people in the leadership. See, you wouldn't care if those yellow people in leadership were truly those that love justice. Because your color does not define you. It's your actions. It is the mind that you bring to the endeavor. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. That's what we want. A question. Yes, sir. A question. A serious question. Yes, sir. Do you think America, as she is presently constructed politically, socially, economically, religiously. Do you think America wants you to have that kind of freedom? No, sir. No, 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 no. no. Don't, don't be quick with your answer. Because some of you are believers in this crap. You believe these bastards are going to change. Every generation sentenced to that same system because we don't want to abandon it. Can this system give us equal justice? How do you know? We've been here 464 years. What the hell is wrong with you? That you still hope that this enemy will give you what they've never given you. think under this system you get equal equality of opportunity? Come on. No. Wait, wait. Is no your answer? You sure? I just want to check on the Negroes.
Do you really believe that they won't change? They don't want to change. They don't have the will to change. And you don't have the power to force the change. Have you ever been in a relationship? How many of you have had failed marriages? May I see your hands, please? Not mine. I'm just helping you to raise your hands. I got my beautiful wife right here with me. Stand up, Khadija. And I acted a fool, too. <laughs> but I had a beautiful wife. I was trying to be a man. Brother Malcolm was my teacher. Yes, sir. I couldn't have had a better one for my beginning. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But I was trying to be a man but didn't know how. And I saw Brother Malcolm. He was the only man that I saw in my life. He touched me very deeply. And I thought in order to be a man, you got to be able to order your wife. I soon found out. That's, that's not the way. You can be a soldier, but you can't make her your private. Wait, wait, did I say something wrong? Wait a minute. Oh, I mean, you know how they treat privates in the armed forces? That's what I mean. So anybody mind got lower than that? That ain't me. That's you. My wife wasn't made for me to order her. My teacher was not teaching her to accept orders from a fool. She would accept my orders if they were given with love and they were intelligent. We've been married 66 years. I live under a different system than the system of this world. My wife was trained by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to respect me as I was not yet a man, but be patient with me. Because the enemy's destruction of us as men has been nearly 100% complete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So if our women are impatient with our development, they'll fall in love because we're handsome, so we think. <laughs> they'll fall in love because we stay in the gym and, and, you know, develop muscles. And silly women like muscles. But when that's all you got, muscle is in trouble. The woman that we have is our best friend. Dr. Leonard Jeffries is here. His beautiful wife is here. 
They've been together a long time. That's an example for us. So we've come up under the white man and he's made us really into him. So as he is not giving us justice, we have a problem being fair to ourselves and being fair to those under our charge. So a complete transformation. Right. Yes, sir. Complete. Yeah. Complete transformation yes, sir. is needed. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to ask another question. Yes, sir. Do you think the white man can repair the damage that he has done? You sure? Many of us graduated from fine universities, but the universities we graduated from can't repair us. So when we talk about repair, reparatory justice, you're looking to the wrong source for repair. The enemy broke us and remade us in his image. So the Bible says we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We have to be broken again. We have to be completely made over again. So the Bible asks the question, how can they know? Except they have a teacher. And how can they have a teacher except he be sent? The enemy is not going to send you a teacher to repair the damage that he did. So who do you have to look to? Where do we look? Oh, man, I have to tell you the truth. I'm, I am a little exhausted, and I have not been well a couple of days, and I can feel the strain of trying to get my points over. So I'm going to try to shut it down. But I can't shut it down without helping us to see there's a better way. The repair of us has to come from the God who created us. By whatever name you call him. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. You're looking at a black man. Living in America yes, sir. under the tyranny of white people. Yes, but whenever my brother Conrad came yes, sir. and needed something, yes, sir. I was not like a Negro, nor was I like a bank asking for collateral. When SCLC was dead in the water, the leader of SCLC came. He said, our place is going to close down. We, we, we can't do it. We don't have the money. 
Yes, sir. That's what he said. I wrote him a check for $10,000. Yes, yes, and he said it saved his organization. Yes, sir. That's what he said. Yes, sir. Absolutely did. How could I do that if I didn't have support? Some of you think that the minister sold out to Scientology. He done sold out. Scientology gave him so many million dollars. You can't believe that a man that talked like me don't have to bother nobody for nothing because the people that I serve love me enough that they support me that I can support others. If I was paid for by others, they would have a string over me. You don't see no strings. The string that you can't see is the string that God has on me. But I owe nobody nothing. I don't borrow money. I don't steal. I don't lie. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I try my best to do it. Because I'm a new black man. No, no, no. Look at your brother. He don't look tired or old. I have no wrinkles that I need to worry about. I go to sleep at night Without worrying, I did nobody wrong during the day. So I can sleep good at night. I'm what you're looking for. I'm a fully repaired black man. government don't like me. But Elijah Muhammad made me. And the God that made him also participated in my making. I'm a well-made man. You know how they say in the, in the hood, when you're a made man, by the gangsters that are in power, you walk with the power of those who made you. God made me. Elijah Muhammad taught me and shaped me. I don't have no other makers. I learned from Brother Malcolm. I learned from Dr. King. Yes, sir. I learned from Baba Dudley Thompson. Yes, sir. I learned from Michael Manley. Yes, sir. I learned from 
young and old. Yes, sir. But I always kept my mooring. I don't use drugs. But I'm high all the time. Don't you want to try that yourself? Brother can tell you, man, I don't worry about what white folk think about me. They're planning right now to take my life. I laugh at them. But you can only have my life if God allow you to. Yes, sir. But hell, I ain't running from you. No, sir. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. I had a message for the president, but I don't want to waste time. <laughs> I know he need to hear it, but I'm your guest. 